Welcome what? back. <laughs> back to another. Yes, sir. I'm just trying to beat Talbot, man. I know, I just, man. Don't just, you just miss him? He's just not there. He's not there. He uh, decided to leave. Yeah, he's gone. He's gone forever. I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> Talbot will be back. Uh, he's in Miami. This is two yeah. episodes in a row with no Talbot. I know. I know. So last one we had a little brought to you action with Mark yep. and Jared and Ray. Yes. We were talking about a little NBA playoffs. Yes. And this episode, it's just you and I, man. Man. This is our first one with just you and I. Let's do it. Let's do it, baby. Absolutely. We were kind of <clears throat> playing with each other going back and forth. So yeah. we were like, is this going to be a testy episode or is this going to be a fun episode? So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, yeah, but, we'll see. <laughs> but uh, no, it's it's good. Mark and, Mark and I have been friends since third grade. So we man. go way back. Yeah. Literally way back. Huh? Literally like brothers. Yeah, yeah, for real. Yeah, For real, man. Yeah. I saw, uh, by the way, uh, on social media, mm-hmm. I saw... Uh, Taylor? No, what? not to, or wait, no, it was EJ. EJ. EJ graduated. Yeah, he just graduated yesterday. I was like, yes. EJ graduated. I was yes. like, no, nah, it wasn't Taylor. Not Taylor. But, because uh, I just reshared something with Taylor. But EJ, he did graduate. Um, I forgot what school he's going to, but he's going to college, man. Proud of him. Uh, yeah. So he's growing up fast. Yeah, we had, uh, we had uh, his dad, Ernest, and uh, Marquand's yeah. brother on the, the podcast here the last couple episodes before yeah. on episodes 33 and 34. So uh, yeah. seeing that was kind of cool being able to see Ernest there. Yeah, man. But cool. Super sick. So we are bringing you another episode today. This is episode 36, I yes, believe. Yes, it is. Yes, and it is. Um, we're super excited. One, we are getting super close. Believe it or not, we'll come up on 52, so a full year of episodes here yeah. in the next couple of months, which Dang. is just wild to think that about. It's crazy. Yeah. I did, mm. did you think we'd make it that long? No, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not. Yeah. No, I did not. So, uh, one, it's it's a Friday. We're filming this, so we're kind of we're we're uh, having a little fun in the studio, but uh, it's. It's downtown days weekend, yeah. so we're hoping to get this out this weekend uh, for y'all to be able to, to tune into. But in downtown Lee Summit, if you're looking for something fun to go to and and uh, be able to take the family to or friends or the, just the the significant other, yeah. it's a fun little vibe. Yeah. It's uh, downtown Lee Summit here in Kansas City, and they have some cool things from beer to yeah. Uh, you know, whatever hot dogs and different stuff and yeah. uh, cool little vendors and, and things like that. So super cool, neat little spot. So we got a, we got a tent out here in front of our offices. People yep. have been running all over the place in our building. <laughs> and then we got Talbot who's running around in Miami having yes. fun on vacation. Having a great time. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, uh, but let's get into it without further let's ado. Do it. We got a little uh, bottle called Bib and Tucker. Oh, yeah, and like, Bib and Tucker. Yeah. I was like, man, I'm missing the tea. The tea's <laughs> on the side over here. Ooh. And uh, Bib and Tucker, it's yeah. uh, aged for six years. We got 92 really? proof, so 46% alcohol content. Oh. Um, and this is batch 30, bottle uh, 33154. So 30, it's their 33,154 bottle. That's pretty cool. They have that number on there. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm excited to see what this does. I don't know if I'll be able to do the Talbot cork. Oh no, oh, that was that was bad. That was really bad. <laughs> Golly, dude, it just slides right on out. <laughs> that was a little better. That <laughs> I, was, I tried it. You see how easy that just popped out though? Compared yeah, it, to some it was of easy. Oh, dude, smell that good. smells really good. I'm not gonna lie. So, oh, give me your glass. I'll pour yeah. you. I'm excited about this. Like I said, we just wanted to bring you guys some content, and we're excited about it. It's just me and Luke. Yeah, brother. Luke and I, <clears throat> we wanted to have a little fun. This smells really good, man. Yeah. Let me uh, do a little cheers. We're yeah. not going to take a sip yet. No, nope. no. Nope. I had to do a cheers before we do. Um, But, man. You know what this smells like? You know and what's I don't know crazy, ever too? I need to look up, uh, let me look up our flavors. For any of you uh, Crown Royale drinkers, this is what this smells like. Uh, it smells just like that. Really? Yes, it does. I'm not a crown guy. Mm, I'm so. not either. I'm not either. But I've definitely had it in my lifetime. Yes, I have too. Crown and Coke. <laughs> you got to mix it a little bit. Absolutely. Oh, man. I, this looks cool. Too bad Talbot can't do this one with us. He uh-huh. would like this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, the aroma. Mm. And that's what I, that's immediately what I, I smelled. I'm just going to go ahead. We won't We won't make you guess. I'm, okay. I'm just going to... Okay. We'll just, just go through it because it it's the two of us. Let's do it. But aged for a minimum of six years in the barrel, this bourbon leads with a scent of vanilla. That's uh, what I immediately yep. smelled. Sweet hay. Mm. 
uh, accented by sandalwood and mace. Mm. So the uh, what they have on here is vanilla pecan pie. Oh, wow. Yes. So And it's got a little bit of chestnuts in it. So mm. I, I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, it has a nose of antiques, new saddle leather, chamomile, soaked... Ooh, what? I gotta make you. I gotta make you guess this, man. Soaked what? I. That's exactly. So it's got some warm cinnamon, but guess what we have in this one? Gosh, it's a sweet. It's a sweetness. Now maybe we do a cheers and then we'll we'll do that. All okay. right, we'll do a little that. taste. A little whiskey for the soul, insurance, insurance for, for the, the wallet. Let's see if you taste it. This is good. I like it. Yeah. So. I- but you want me to guess or go? Yes, I want you to guess. But okay. we've had this before, but we've not had it more than once. It's just been one time. And it was our very first ever whiskey on the Whiskey and Insurance Podcast. This is hard. He's taking me all the way back <laughs> to the beginning. 30, 30, okay, I'm going to guess. Ago. I'm going to guess. Uh-huh. Black licorice? Nope. <sighs> so okay. I'm going to give you a hint. Think honey, but not honey. Think honey, but not honey. Yes. Honey, but not honey. What's another sweet taste that we've already had, but only one time? Honey, not honey. This is going to pee piss me off. You want the answer? <laughs> Just give it to me. Butterscotch. Dang. <laughs> I taste that now. Yeah. So I, when I read that, I was like, "Oh my god!" I've been wanting another, ep- like another whiskey with yes. butterscotch in it because we, I've always gone back to that original one. We liked that one. We did. It was really good. And the proof on that was was heavy. It was, was stronger like, than this one. Yeah, really strong. Mm. But that's really good. So this is really really good. Uh, I'll rate it. I don't know what the price is on this. I could probably figure it out for you. We mm. always do that. But go ahead and rate it while I'm doing that. I, I like it. It's very smooth going down, and it's it's it, it, it is sweet. I will say that it is on the sweeter side, um, and I think that maybe that's the butterscotch. But I'll give it about a seven and a half eight. Fifty dollar bottle. Not bad. Yeah. Not bad. I'll give it a seven and a half eight. I was gonna say something similar. I was mm-hmm. gonna go seven point five. Mm-hmm. So. I I like the whiskey. If Talbot hit, was here, he'd give it at least a seven. So that's uh, that's yeah. good. I I think it's a good whiskey. It goes down pretty smooth, at least for me. It's enjoyable. But uh, this is a great time where we would like to always pause right after we do the taste, and we have uh, Mark come on in and and do our little station identification, our yeah. support for Apollo. Apollo is what helps make this happen. The facilities, the cameras, Absolutely. the the uh, equipment that we all have been able to to be able to have. Uh, thank you, Apollo, for the support that you're allowing for the Whiskey and Insurance podcast. Absolutely. So we're going to take a quick break yep. to support our, our sponsor. We'll be right back. We want to shout out our sponsor, Apollo Insurance Group. They are one of the largest health insurance brokerages out of the Midwest. They specialize in health, life, dental, vision, a lot of the things you need in regards to insurance they have. So they typically save their clients a lot of money in regards to their premium. So if you don't have someone that's helping you or aiding you through this process or this chaotic world of health insurance, please reach out to them. They fight for you, they specialize in what they do, and they're great at their job. Welcome back. We are back Bang. now, Luke. Boom. We yeah. tasted it. We like it. Seven and a half average. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get into some some topics, man. Yeah, yeah. It's some new stuff, some exciting stuff that we, has been going had. on with our uh, not just our industry, but us as Apollo yeah. as a whole. So let's talk about yeah. it. Yeah, I, I tell you what, um, <clears throat> what's been going on in the industry recently? It's been a lot of what people would normally uh, be used to saying or accustomed to turmoil, mm. and I will. <laughs> I want to like take people like for instance, uh, just this last week, yeah. uh, big news in just the Kansas City market where we're located is Blue KC yep. uh, has pulled out of the market for Medicare Advantage plans, and they said December thirty first, two thousand and twenty four, yeah. will be the last day of coverage for anybody that's enrolled in a Medicare Advantage plan. Mm. So one of the cool things that uh, now that stinks, and a lot of people are used to Blue KC. This impacts about thirty two thousand customers. Yes, it does. That's a lot. Um, and one of the cool things that we're trying to do is is figure out how we can get in front of that and uh, have a good marketing plan and whatnot so that uh, Blue KC customers feel like they can go to a hometown like us and uh, uh, be able to get all their options available to yeah, them. So absolutely. that's one thing. Uh, Assurance IQ, massive brokerage, about five weeks ago announced that they were closing uh, their doors, and which was going to impact roughly 1,500 agents mm-hmm. nationwide. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, big deal. And so one of the things that we were able to do, we built a relationship with uh, one of the their Medicare senior partners. Yeah. And we're going to be onboarding an outside team for oh, uh, for for Medicare with an Apollo. So it's I've been it's been busy. So this week I've been <laughs> I will tell you uh, part of the reason why we're filming on a Friday and we're going to post an episode here for you this weekend rather than our normal Wednesday Thursday slot uh, is because I've been back to back jam packed yeah. with uh, with interviews, which is a great problem to have. Yeah. Uh, being able to do interviews, meet some awesome people. It's been kind of cool because it's expanded Apollo's reach and horizons. Like the today I was talking to somebody in Miami, Florida, and oh, then the God. next one was uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Yesterday was Philly. Yeah. Uh, and then I've had Cincinnati, Ohio. I've had uh, Great Bend, Indiana. I've mm-hmm. had Wisconsin, Tennessee. Uh, let's see what else have I had. You're all over the map, man. Uh, oh, Louisiana. Okay. Yep, yeah, had somebody down <laughs> in Louisiana. So what I'll say is, one, we are onboarding agents as we speak, uh, coming over, bo- coming on board from Assurance. We're really excited about, um, and has been adding uh, some new bodies yeah. and some new blood to Apollo and cool. some remote work. So uh, that's that's really neat. Uh, on in addition to that, oh, we got more. Yeah, in addition <laughs> to that, so we've been doing all that. Yeah. In addition to that, we've had our bra- our brand new class for 2024 yes. that we always bring in every yes. year uh, yes. for our under 65 agents start on Monday. Mm-hmm. So this is their first full week. Yeah, man. And uh, yeah, I can I can tell you it's been kind of wild. It's been <laughs> crazy in the office. Yeah. So, uh, it's nothing like fresh blood, fresh yeah. meat, right in the office yeah. because they're so eager and so willing to learn. Mm-hmm. And so it's just been cool watching them just attack it. Yeah. And so it's been really cool, man. It's been yeah. really fun to watch. I tell you what, um, the, kind of going along with that, just mm. the that new blood coming into office, it brings a new energy. Yes. So like if you're a business that's wanting to bring in some new energy to your company, yeah. there's nothing better than to bring in a class of hires of mm. at least four to five people or more. And that new energy will be very vibrant. Yes. Uh, and a lot of people will pick up on that energy. I know I know that you sit yep. uh, right by the new class. So have you already been able to – I'm curious from your experience. Yeah, yeah. Have you picked up on some of the energy that's been in that room? Absolutely. My ear is always to the floor. <laughs> you know, I'm always excited to see and hear how you know they're, they're responding to their new workforce, right? Yeah. This is a lot of their first – real career yeah and so just to see them in the in on the floor working hustling it's very exciting man. and they're energetic these yeah. guys are no fear yeah like when i first started i had fear yeah these guys I have no too. these guys have too, no man. fear and so yeah. it's good shout out to the leaders that yeah. that are leading them it's really cool that and we just keep getting awesome people come to our doorstep man. yeah so it's it's neat so just being able to onboard the people that we've been Mm. uh doing and uh, july 8th will be our next hiring class yeah uh for a lot of these people that i've been interviewing this week okay um so that's exciting mm. um but we, yeah we'll probably have uh between 20 and 25 new agents that are starting a, in the next 30 days uh, that have started this week and mm-hmm. then, then within 30 days you know having another 15 or so that come on board mm. well look let's talk about because that's a, that's a big that's a big plus, uh, mm-hmm. and that's really uh, to be rewarded. Uh, it shows you the growth of Apollo. But I want to talk about how do we go about, um, you know, just recruiting, looking yeah. at the people that we want to bring on. How do we? Yeah. What are we looking for, right? Yeah, and, <clears throat> and just so you guys know, I've done uh, interviews, and and there are people that I just haven't felt maybe are the right fit. Mm. We just didn't vibe. We didn't click. Mm. And uh, I'm a big feel person. Mm. So like I go for what I feel. I ask a lot of questions in an interview process that are open ended and have some dialogue. And I want to know their story and I want them to 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 uh, be able to communicate with me. I was doing an interview, believe it or not. Uh, two hours before this. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Today's been a little crazy. Yeah. Hectic. So I'll, I'll, I'll talk about schedule. And that's, that's actually a good topic. We should talk about managing calendars and schedules. <laughs> uh, we'll talk about that here in, in a bit. But I've, got, I've implemented what's called a gear system, mm. talking on the calendar stuff. Mm. And we'll hit on the gears. We need to talk about the gears that's in one of really, our episodes. That's really, really good, yes. So we'll talk about that. But mm. today alone, I've had a 9 a.m. Uh, meeting. Then I had a 10 a.m. meeting that goes an hour for an interview, an 11 uh, a.m. hour-long interview, a uh, 12.15 hour-long interview. This is, I think it is about 1.25. It is 1.25, so I told Mark that we had about 
30 to 40 minutes to yeah. shoot an episode or a podcast and be able to bring you guys some content that I felt that was impacting me recently yeah. that I felt would be uh, unique and informational for you guys to know about. Um, and then I have a two o'clock interview and I have a three o'clock interview that's in person. And then I have a four o'clock interview. Mm. Um, that'll, you know, all three of those interviews will be about an hour long back to back. It, yeah. So it's been a long day, but I was doing my 10 o'clock interview yeah. after my 9 a.m. meeting. And my 10 o'clock interview, I knew, I asked her her story. You're about to lose your table there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry, I was oh, looking good. at your whiskey glass. <laughs> like, oh, On the no. floor. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I was doing my 10 a.m. interview. Mm-hmm. And within 10 minutes, within 10 minutes of just asking one question, what's your story, I knew I wanted her. Um, yeah. Good. Yeah. She told you, and she was honest. You can tell. You yeah. can read her. Yeah. Uh, oh, and absolutely. Felt and she was uh, she was Miami, Florida. She's in. That's where she a resides. A whole different part of the, yeah. of the world. And mm-hmm. I knew within ten minutes, uh, she's already on board, and she's going to be coming on board for July eighth. Oh, uh, I knew just right away, um, just the right fit, right person, right personality, yeah. um, and somebody who uh, matches our ideals. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Really takes a, into account our mission statement. Yeah. Our mission statement, which is to positively impact people's lives. Yeah. And I just knew. And so that's one of my first questions. Mm. I love to ask when I'm in an interview. um, I love to ask, tell me your story. Mm. Let me know who Mark is Mm. or who you are, Mark. Because that alone, very open-ended, you can take that question many ways. And based how they answer that, that question, we can then, you know, it opens up a dialogue. And then I have a whole list of questions to yeah. ask. But and that drives the the interview process. But that question alone really can tell me, are we going to vibe or are we not going to vibe within the first 10 minutes of the phone call? Yeah. And <clears throat> so, yeah, that, that's a little bit about the interview process. I like that a lot. And that is so, that question is so, like you said, is so um, broad. Mm-hmm. But um, you can really, really dissect it. Um, and it shows you who that person is yeah. and it shows you what drives them. Yeah. It shows you what motivates them. Is, is family important? Yeah. Um, they'll bring it up if it is, or yeah. is money important? They'll bring it up if it is, if it's in the story, mm-hmm. you know, so it's always going to give you the tools that you need to say, okay, this is what we're looking for. I understand it. She understands it. Let's <laughs> go. And so yeah. that's really good. That's a really good question to ask story. I like it. I like yeah. it a lot. Yeah, so <clears throat> we, we do questions like that. I ask questions about the industry. I ask about uh, what they like about sales, uh, why they're in sales, why they're in insurance overall. Um, but yeah, I mean, those are the, the it's always good to know um, as you're going through a day, you want to be able to, the, at the end, the end result of an interview is can you connect with that person yeah. in 45 minutes to an hour? Mm. And, um, you know, that's, that's my goal. Yeah. Can I have a connection that is deeper than surface? Yeah. And if I can't connect deeper than surface, and I know uh, I'm not trying to get philosophical or <laughs> anything like that, but at the end of the day, you want to work with people that you like and genuinely like. And if we can't connect over a 45-minute combo, yep. and I don't see passion and mm-hmm. and vigor and enthusiasm in a 45, 60-minute phone call about what you're wanting to do, you it's probably not the I right know. fit. Yep. Um, so yeah, I, I base a lot of that off of feel. It's a gut, yeah. it's a gut check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, absolutely. I like Which that. you have a lot of. That, yeah. by the way. We've <laughs> exactly. talked about this before. Yes. Uh, gut yes. check, gut checks are good, and yes. you got to roll with your gut sometimes. Yes, I think it's crucial, man. And I think it just shows that when you do that, when you follow the gut, and your gut is aligning with what you believe in and what the mm-hmm. company stands for, you bring on the right people. Yeah. Uh, and so it's just been not only a blessing but a pleasure for again going back to the new class that we just hired. I mean, these guys are, we did the first Monday morning meeting. We do a Monday morning meeting the first of each month. Yep. Um, and so we just did that uh, for June. And when I say these guys were wired, they were focused, they were locked in, they mm-hmm. were listening, they wanted to know more, they were engaged. Um, those. This is how we know, okay, we got a room full yeah. of people that are eager and ready to work. Yeah, you usually can tell within 30 days yeah. um, how successful someone's going to be. Not all the time. You know, that we've seen some people that have really struggled in the beginning, and we give long leashes, mm-hmm. right? Like, we do. Mm-hmm. We want everybody's success. We care. I mean, most people that follow along with us know that we have a family-run business, yeah. and we care about, truly care about everybody that's involved, but yeah. you still have to make business decisions. But you usually can tell within 30 days how successful somebody's going to be. Yeah. 
Um, and then from there, and, th- and that's strictly not necessarily their success in the 30 days. Yeah. It's their work ethic yep. in the 30 days. There you go. That will tell you how successful someone will be. They And go. we've had some of the worst people yep. for the first five months of the job yeah. being dead last in the class yep. end up being the top performer the next <laughs> year. Exactly. So, it, But they had the work ethic. Yep. And yep. that's why we, we give them a longer leash. Now, yep. if you don't have the work ethic and you're a bottom performer, then we, we, yeah. You gotta, gotta a a you gotta make a business. You gotta make a business decision. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I that, I share that because as as you are starting, if you're in the insurance agency business mm. and you are hiring people uh, for sales roles, usually you want to be able to ask those questions. And are they the right culture fit? You want you don't want to bring. We're the type of people that we don't bring on any and everybody because it's got to be a good fit for Apollo. It's got to be a good fit for. The organization as a yeah. whole, the leadership team. Yeah. It's got to be a good fit for the agent that you're bringing on board. And it's a three legged stool. Mm-hmm. And all three of those have got to be able to be aligned mm-hmm. um, for success yep. for the person, organization, and the client. Yeah. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I mean, you said it absolutely correct, 100%. Uh, it just goes back to, you know, is it the right fit? Yeah. Um, and so, and do, do the goals, do the morals, do they line up with what we're yeah. trying to do? And does it line up with what they're trying to do? So yeah. it's very, very critical. I really <laughs> like being back behind a microphone again. <laughs> <laughs> you did this last one without me. Hey, so. I know you were feeling some type of way. But that was, it but, feels good. Yeah, man. No, it, it's, it does. Been, it's been good. I don't even know yeah. how much time we've been on you this. Gotta, but, uh, yeah, you, you're cutting it close. Uh, but, yeah, no, I, pretty soon here. Uh, we'll give another 10 minutes on, yeah. on this or questions that maybe you have asked. Yeah, then yeah. We'll, then we'll wrap up for, for everybody involved. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, just, yeah, go for it. No, absolutely. Let, let's take a p- pivot. I want to know. Uh, just you as the peak in regards to leadership of Apollo, Mm -hmm. when you see a new class onboarding and you're hiring 25 new agents or whatever may have you Mm -hmm. outside for a remote team. um, Tell me, what is that? What do you visualize? What do you see or what, what uh, extra work do you feel needs to be done to make sure that this is maintained and make sure that this is going the right way that it needs to go? What, I guess I'm asking you, what worries and then what, uh, you know, positive thoughts do you see within, within oh, yeah. the onboarding process and hiring a lot of people like this? <clears throat> worries, golly. Uh, <laughs> there's always a ton of those that you can have, right? Um, yeah. the business, is, uh, business is all about taking risks yeah. and uh, calculated risks mm-hmm. and then managing those risks. Um, and when you onboard this many people, one, just the, the, the salaries, um, you know, there's a lot of, uh, money that just goes into it at first licensure, uh, contracting, just getting them onboarded, uh, systems, software, emails, you name Mm. it. Um, all that goes into play and you really want to make sure that you're not wasting time or money on the wrong person. That's hence why that hiring process is so important. Yep. Um, and why we, you know, we go through, you know, we'll bring on when I said we're bringing on 20 to 25 people total Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in the, in these last 30 days, um, that's what we're doing. But in order to get to those 25 people, we will have conducted 150 second round (laughs) interviews. Um, so we're not, we, we don't offer more, uh, you know, offers or job openings yeah. to uh, any and everybody mm-hmm. we're very selective very picky and rightfully so Absolutely. um but yeah i mean from a, a stress perspective um just naturally speaking you got to make sure that you're making f- sound financial decisions and yep. making sure that you do watch at the end of the day the bottom line yep. um because you can get overextended you can because not only are you bringing on people but then you also have to figure out, all right, how do we drive leads to these people? Mm. And how are they going to perform? And they have to perform at a certain level, a certain closing percentage in order for you to be able to make your return on investment back. Mm-hmm. Nor are you going to make that in your first couple of months. It's going to be a, a several month long process. So you're going to operate in the red naturally yeah. for several months. Yep. You have to because it's the investment the business makes in developing people. Yep. Um, and being okay with that. Yep, understanding uh, that. Yeah. But that's the risk for higher reward Rewards. later on. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that just managing both of those, yeah, and um, it's a it's a balancing of, uh, effect. Yeah, yeah. And I think that that's why once again we only bring on the amount of people that we do mm-hmm. because we want to be able to serve service the the clientele. We yeah. want to be able to have all of our agents that we do have pl- plenty of leads, plenty of opportunities, yeah. plenty of success stories that build their confidence within the industry yeah yeah so 
managing that, balancing all that, um, and what was the follow up question, or did that really answer? You kind of really answered it. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it, naturally speaking, it's yeah always. I for me, uh-huh. I, what I'll say is like, how do you manage the the stress of that? Yeah, I feel like I want everybody's success way more than what they do. Yeah. Which, but that's naturally just because I I literally care so much. Like yep. it, it kills me whenever somebody is not successful at Apollo. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's like taking a piece of your heart out. Right? <laughs> um, but that's I feel like that's just the type of leader that I am. I want everybody to be successful. I really do, um, and I want what's best for them. Yeah. And when you bring on that many people, yeah, um, I want them to get success so quick. quick. Yep. And because yep. the quicker you get it, the more confidence you build, the more confidence you build that leads to more success. It's just this snowball effect. Yeah. And uh, so that's probably the most stress I have is like, man, how can we get them success quickly? Yeah, yeah exactly. Because I know if we can get that, then yeah. the rest will follow. Yeah. I like that 100%. I agree. Yeah. I always like to see how you feel from your position within the company, right? Rather yeah. than myself or uh, Matt Safranic or whatever. Mm-hmm. But, you know, from our position, or myself or Matt, it's I feel like the most um, the important thing for us at that level is to make sure that when we onboard new people, right, we already have a, an existing group of individuals that are in the office, they're operating, mm-hmm. they're operating at a high level. So when we merge mm-hmm. this new group of people, now we have to figure out, okay, how can we make this whole team cohesive, yeah. flowing and going in the right direction mm-hmm. and get the you know the vets or the people that's been there for a while to mm-hmm. buy in and help right help the new class because we're going to yeah. need that you know peer to peer help is very important yes you sure have is. leaders you have people that are their job is to help you and that's the leaders but it's nothing like peer to peer help so okay how do you get this veteran group to help when oh, they need yeah. to help and push along uh, the new people that are coming on board i think that's that, very important <clears throat> i think that goes back to and as i've done these interviews that truly goes back to how your mission statement is of your company, mm. the values that you have people stand for. So our mission statement, as you guys are aware, if you've been, <laughs> a, been tuning in multiple times, is to positively impact people's lives. Yeah. And we do that through the five main core values, work ethic, excellence, sacrifice, trustworthiness, and courage. Yeah. And um, why I think that's important for any company hiring yeah. people is – don't just throw something out on the wall and say, oh, this is our mission statement. Mm-hmm. Like, when we did that, we went off-site to Scott Barb's house, mm. went into the basement. We had outside agents come in, come over, and we spent hours talking about what our mission statement was going to be and how important the values were going to be that go into that. Mm. Uh, I was sharing that today, actually, mm. was the, on one of the interviews. <laughs> Somebody asked me. Yeah. And uh, just reminded me of that. And so we really took some time around yeah. this and making sure that it was good because we felt that if a lot of people, sometimes they need some help in identifying what's going to be the most motivating for them. Mm-hmm. And having those values and that mission statement is fair, pretty powerful. Yeah. So when you talk about getting peer-to-peer help and from the veterans to help the rookies, um, what a better mission statement, positively impact people's lives, do it through the five core values. Yep. And we're, cha- we're chasing this common goal as an entity, as an organization, yep. which is power in numbers. Yep. <laughs> and it's powerful. Yep. Everybody wants to be a part of that. Yep. They want to be. A, they want to grab a hold of that. Yep. It's cohesive. It's Absolutely. one unit. It's one team. And we are one team, Apollo. Yep. It's the team. And we're there to help. Uh, that's the way we structured everything. Yeah. So, yeah, Absolutely. that's really good. <laughs> no, I like that. A hundred percent. You got to You definitely got to help. Uh, it's kind of a um, uh, we definitely love to help each other out. And we always striving to get to the next goal, yeah. not only as individuals, but as a team. And so it's like a, a no man or woman left behind type yeah. of atmosphere oh, yeah. that we operate within. And so we practice that. And we practice what we preach. Yeah. Uh, I think, man, you have another interview to get to. I do. <laughs> I do. So we're going to wrap up. We're going to wrap, gonna wrap up, this up. We love giving yeah. you guys content. Like I said, Luke just, just shared a, a bunch of knowledge. You know, I've uh, shared a lot of gems with you guys uh, just about onboarding, just about new yeah. hires, about, you know, the, uh, uh, the interview process, things like that. Any questions or concerns that you guys have, reach out to both of us. Yep. We're here. We're here for you. We've both been doing hiring now yeah. for... Four? Four years, four, years, four yeah. or five four years, years, we've been involved on the hiring and managing yeah. side of that that stuff. I'm, yeah. mine goes all the way back to seventeen, but for you, I <laughs> yeah. know I think it was nineteen. 19 so was the first yeah, year. yeah. So you mm. know, we both have had some experience in it. 
we both have that the, those same gut checks on yep. you know what's the right vibe to move forward with somebody. That doesn't mean we make the right decision every time. Nope. We, I've I've made mistakes and and yep. and not bringing on the right person. And I think everybody does right. The I just do. uh, knowing that, but still, you want to win eighty yep. percent of the time, and not the <laughs> uh, not the other way eighty yeah. percent of the time. So that's uh, kudos to this. I appreciate getting behind the cameras it and feels the mic good. again. It feels good, and then really hopefully good. next week we'll get Talbot once he comes back from Miami, so we can yeah. have a have an OG uh, podcast <laughs> again because we've been all over the place. It's the summer months, man. Yep. You know, you're taking a little bit off time yep. and it's just been fun. Yeah, you man. know, we're just, we're just Enjoying grinding life. through it and, yeah. and whatnot. So hopefully you've enjoyed this episode. Yes. Please put in the comments what you like, what you didn't like, uh, what you'd like to hear in the future, yep. or if you got questions on hiring and the process of things or what you would like to implement in your own agency. If mm. you're an insurance agent or agency, mm. That's out there tuning in. Yeah. So, Let's do it. A little whiskey for the soul. Insurance for, for the, the wallets. wallets. Till next time, guys.